Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. So with all these wonderful updates we've had recently with, with Lightroom and previously with Photoshop, we have so many tools now uh, that we can use to really try to make our images more interesting and more fun uh, and, and particularly have uh, a good time post-processing our images. Now this shot here is the old mill at uh, Harnham, which is near Salisbury in uh, Wiltshire, England. And uh, I quite like the shot because uh, there's lots of lanterns I can light, some windows I can light, and uh, there's a little chap riding his bicycle along the path here. So this is a sort of day to night that we, we've done. Uh, we've changed the sky and um, we've added in a few reflections and bits and pieces. So if you actually look at the original, and I'll change over, there's the original. It was a bright sunny day, nice shot of a meal, water coming through, but uh, really wanted to give it a little bit more drama. So we turned it into a day tonight. And I'm going to show you in this video how we did that. Now, if you'd like to follow along, the raw image is, um, is linked down below. Uh, and in there, you'll also find the sky. So you'll have both files that you'll be able to follow along. If you enjoy the video and you, you like what I'm doing here, then please give me a like. It always helps. And uh, if you've got some comments, tips, or even questions, feel free to put them down below in the comments. I always do my best to answer all, all, all of your comments, questions, and, uh, and respond to any tips that you might have. They're always very helpful. If you haven't already, it'd be great for you to subscribe and join me here on YouTube. I'm having a great time, lots of fun. Okay, let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is to go down to the uh, noise reduction, which we can find in detail. And we're going to use the denoise function. The AI denoise function works extremely well. And I'm going to click on that. And uh, what we're going to do is going to run the denoise. So we've got a before and after there. You can see there's a slight improvement. So I'm going to go at 50% rather than 60 because there's not a lot of noise in this actual image itself. And it was shot at ISO 100. So we're going to click enhance. And uh, that's going to just run the algorithm there to remove any additional noise, particularly in the sort of darker areas, you sort of look down this sort of area here, you'll see just a little bit of noise there. But uh, once denoise is completed, then it really does remove, does remove all the other noise. So that's good. Now we're going to look at the transform function because I'd like to try to get the perspective correct here uh, and over here. I'm not going to go for auto. I'm just going to go straight into guided, so I can then draw a line from this corner. Here, yeah, just, just find the corner of that wall. I think it's going to be about there. And then I'm going to go over here to this street light column you can see and take a line down on that column there, nice and straight. So we've got two straights here. Now that still looks like it's falling away over this, this side. So I can just pull that over just slightly, left or right, just to try to get a feel for where it would would feel a little bit better. I think it's probably going to be about around about there. That seems to work quite well. Happy with that. So then what we're going to do is we're going to replace the sky here. The sky is quite quite boring, unfortunately. Uh, just a blue sky. If I did bring down the highlights here, you can see there's just a, a blue sky and there's just some uh, jet vapor trails in the sky. So I probably want to put a nice sunset sky in here. So what we're going to do is, uh, is add that sky. But I think before we do that, I think I'd like to try to crop a little bit. We've got a very bright sunshine on this left-hand side here. So I think I'm going to go into crop. I'm going to bring that crop across to the to about there. I'm going to also come up here a little bit from the bottom. Just let that shadow fall into that corner there. You can see that works quite well. And uh, just going to check whether we've got a standard size here, uh, whether 4, 3 works. Um, let's have a look. That's a bit tight on the 4.3, but it will work with these trees over here. So we've still got that shadow sort of falling into the into the bottom there. Bring that over a little bit. There we go. So hit return. So that's good. Okay, so let's just increase the contrast just a little bit before we take it over into Photoshop, just to give us a really sharp edge on that. And I am going to bring down the highlights just a little bit, and I am going to open up the um, the shadows just so we've we've got all this a little bit more illuminated. You can see there's a couple of lights on, but we've got some nice lanterns along the front 
here of the uh, old mill and we can use those to uh, light the area up. So um, I'm quite happy with that. I'm not going to do anything with the blacks or the whites for now and I'm just going to right click on the image, go to editing and go over to Adobe Photoshop. Now I'm still using the beta edition as opposed to the full edition uh, as I find it's just a little bit better with the generative fill function. So let's go over here to the Photoshop and uh, we're going to have a look at this sky replacement. But just before I do, I just want to tidy up a few signs like this this sign here on this uh, this sort of water valve here. Uh, we want to get rid of this sort of danger sign. So we can remove we can use that with the remove tool, which you can go into the the, the sort of remove tool here and or click the letter J will take you in there and then you can select it. So I'm just going to zoom in on this area here, use the space bar to to move across and then we're just going to paint that danger notice out there have a look around anything else we want to get rid of I think I'll probably get rid of this CCTV camera up here it's okay a little vent on the wall up there that just sort of breaks it up a little bit um, and there is a window vent just there so I'm just going to click on that see if we can get rid of that it does a cracking job really good job just get rid of a couple of these vents here and there's an alarm box there yeah, I'm not a big fan of uh, alarm boxes, so uh, we'll be removing those. A couple of vents there again. I'm going to leave the cables on the wall for now because you can see that they're all sort of coming down and feeding the light fitting. So we'll leave, the, leave those on. Is there anything else we want to remove from here? Just going to zoom in a little bit more. Got some lovely brackets on the wall. They look very nice. Got the chap on his bicycle, he's, just, he's moving just a little bit closer. Slight blur as he's coming, coming through, but I, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just going to remove that sign on that door there. And uh, there's an intercom there. Let's get rid of the intercom. So that's fine. I don't know what that yellow thing is on there. I think it's a wasp catcher. So we'll just we'll just take that out as well. Just uh, just to tidy up in there. And I think that's probably all we need, really need to do there. Um, uh, the image itself is quite clean, so. I love these old roofs that with the all the beams have moved. You know, this roof is probably three, four, maybe five hundred years old, but certainly it's uh, awesome. Look at the way the contours in there. There's a little bird flying in the sky there, but we're going to do a sky replacement anyway. And um, is there anything else? No. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out, and we are going to. Uh, we're going to do the uh, the sky replacement. So we do that by going to edit, go to sky replacement, and then we've got uh, the previous sky that you use will appear in this little module box up here. Um, so we could put the uh, the nighttime shot in if we want to. We could just move that up a little bit to see see what sort of. Uh, but I think I'm going to put a sunset in to be honest. So. Um, we can we can have a look see what different sunsets there are now if you pull down this little menu here you get a choice of quite a few that are already come with um, Photoshop uh, but one of the images this is one of my shots here that uh, I took a little while ago that works quite well lovely colors in the sky so um, if you if you can't find uh, where you are and you want to add one from your folders then you can just click the little plus button here and that will go into your that will go into your folders and then you can select the sunset image that I've got here. So, um, but that is effectively this one. So, and when you're, when you're done, don't click OK now. What we do is we just click on this little grey panel just to click away so we can get back to the module and we can then use the sliders to, uh, to just dial in the edge and uh, make it look right here. We can also use the flip tick box here. We can flip it from left to right so that that gives quite a nice look as well over this way with that sort of sky so we've got to look at this edge there's a little bit of a halo running along this edge you can see it there so what we need to do is look at moving the shift edge we can move it to the left and that makes that halo bigger or we can move it to the right that makes the halo smaller but you can see that this is overlapping the building the sky is actually coming in on the building and that's dealt with by the fade edge slider and the further to the left you go uh, the more you get that and the further to the right you go you get you get uh, a similar effect 
And I'm just going to back off the shift edge slightly because I just want to get it away from the, the edges here. So there's a little bit there, but we can deal with that in a moment. So I'm just I'm going to go about here. We'll come back and sort this out. And then the fade edge, I'm just going to look at these edges and just, just go that way gives us more of a halo. And this way gives us less of a halo. Actually quite a nice tight edge. It's a little bit difficult around these trees here. You can see we've still got um, the sky, the blue sky from before, and the edges that don't look don't look so good. Um, so I'm just going to bring that right the way over. So to sort this out, what we can do is we're just going to zoom in. So we're going to go to the zoom in here. This all looks good coming across here. Quite happy with that. It's just this sort of edge here, really, and this area around here. So we'll zoom in on that. There we go. And then we need to stop it coming in here so we can go to the refine the refine edge tool here and we can make the brush a little bit bigger and if you if you just click on it it will add the sky if you hold down the alt key it will remove the sky and you can just keep washing over just a little bit at a time just to take away any bleed that's coming through from the sky behind so as you can see I'm just moving around there you can see this 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 chimney pot here if I take the brush and make it smaller, hold down the Alt key and then just say wash down over that. And that will just take away the, the sky that's sort of bleeding through on that area there. So you're holding down the Alt key, that's the real key to it. And just taking that. Now, if you go up and over, if you start here, and let's take a bigger brush, for example. If I take a bigger brush... If I want to go along this edge, as long as the, the center of my circle is on the building, when I go, it won't cut into the sky. Can you see that? Whereas if I'm up in the sky, it will cut into the sky when I do that. So it would cut away and you'd, you'd get this sort of patch where we are. So I'm just going to undo that. Just get that back in there. Right. So... We can use the refine tool. Got my finger still on the Alt key or Option key on a Mac just to take that down. Now that didn't work too well. We got a little bit of a halo starting there. So on Command Z just to undo that. Now here, here we go here as well. So let's down hold down the Alt key or Option on a Mac and just click to remove that bit of sky there. If the sky is a similar color to the building, you will get a little bit of bleed over and I'll just show you in a second, we'll just take that out. So just, just get this sorted here and we just brush that away. So I need to just get that edge cut back in. So I'm gonna go with a positive brush here and just, you can see, just come down on the edge of that, uh, on the edge there, we we'll just work our way out there. Let's take a bigger brush. It. And then we can work our way up along this edge just so we get a nice, really nice cut in there. Now, the street light, as you can see, it, it, the sky is, is sort of cutting into that. So we need to take a small brush, hold down the Alt key, and we can just work our way around that, that light fitting there just to make sure. Following down there, you can see... Now that didn't work so well there, so I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to come up from the bottom. Again, that didn't work because the colours colors are quite close together. I think we're okay up here. There we go. That works well. So the trees, now they're always tricky. So we're going to take a, quite a big brush. Just going to move up to the top here. And on the sky... With not holding down the option or alt key, I'm just going to press the sky there, and then you can just wash over, and you can wash into the the tree itself. You can see I'm still holding it down, so I start out here, and then I come in, and I just paint over those areas just to come out there, come in, and just paint those areas out. Same here. Look, we're going to come in there just to get those colours working quite well out here cutting in again and the same down here look <clears throat> so we'll cut that one in there so we can just refine those edges make the brush a little bit smaller here just to make sure we get in 
around there, just going to come in there as well. There we go. That works very well. So just just finding our way in here so we don't get too much blue showing through. It will all be darkened shortly, so it, it, you won't really see it. But it, I just want to just make sure that we've got a, a decent bit of sky coming through on those on those trees there. That works quite well indeed. Just take that out. Great. So let's just zoom back. So go to zoom. Hold down the option or alt key to click return out. It works quite well. I do want to darken this area down here. This is quite bright, but we'll do that when we go back into uh, into Lightroom. So I think we're we're pretty good there. Let's just check the foreground lighting. We can move from left to right on that. So I think a nice and dark at the top there. And the same with the edge lighting. If we go to the left, you'll see that that lights up along that edge. If we go to the right, it takes a darker hue there, which is what we want to do. And then color adjustment balances the foreground to match the sky. So if I go further to the right, you'll see that the colors go to match the sky. If I go to the left, it will just go back to the original color. So I want to go right over to the right, try and get that sky color in there. And then we can always add a little bit more temperature if you want to, to that sky. It just makes it really, really pop and we can make it slightly, slightly darker. I'm going to go too dark because we're going to darken the whole scene. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to say uh, duplicate layer. So I'm just going to make one duplicate layer, click OK. And now I've got the duplicate layer. So it, we have a before and we have an after. So I don't need that background layer now. So I'm just right click on there um, and I'm just going to uh, delete that layer. So it's gone. So that's it for, for the Photoshop. I think we're pretty happy uh, with the with, with removal of the, of the unseen items that we don't really want to see. We've got a good sky in there. We've blended the tree in. We're going to take this back into Lightroom. So we go to, um, we go into file, we go to close and we say save. And the reason we do close save is that we don't really need it running in the background in our Photoshop. It just uses memory. Uh, it's better to close it, close it out of Photoshop. I'm just going to go back to Lightroom where we have the new image. Now, of course it's a TIFF image because that's the export uh, file format I have from uh, Photoshop that you can select a number of others like like PNG uh, and DNG you can select but they all roughly come back with the same file size um, and they're all 16 bit so uh, I find TIFF is quite compatible with other things so I tend to use TIFF files to do this. So now we're back in um, Lightroom what we're going to do is we're going to darken this whole scene down so we're going to go to the exposure slider and we're just going to darken that down a little bit there like so. Now, as I said, this bush over here needs to be darkened down. So there's a number of ways we can do that. We can go into the masks. We can select objects if we want to. Take a slightly bigger brush whilst we're in objects. And just pick up that bush completely like that. Just paint in the center. And what will happen is it will select just that bush. You can see that. And now we can darken that bush down by just dropping the exposure. So if we go too far, we'll get a really sharp edge on there. Um, so what we can do is we can use this, this slider that we've got for the masks to make it brighter or darker. You can see there. So that's where it started. So we can just slide that to the right and just take a little bit out. Just darken it down, which works quite well. It's a little bit long. The edge there needs to be a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is add to this mask a brush. I'm going to have 100% feather, about probably 40, 50%, somewhere around there with the flow. And I'm just going to take a smaller brush using the square brackets just to the left of the return key. And I'm just going to brush a little bit more darkness into that area there. So that, that will work quite well. That's nice. Now, just want to darken this water down here. This is quite bright. Um, so I'm going to take create a new mask, take a linear gradient. And I'm just going to pull a linear gradient up from the bottom there that sort of runs along this, this path edge here. 
So we've got 100% of the gradient, 0% of the gradient. So we'll go from 100 to 0 across this gradient area. So whatever we apply now will be 100% down, down the bottom. So I'm just going to drop off the exposure slightly. And you can see, the more further I go, the darker it gets down here. And it fades up to no, no effect there. So it just takes that little bit out the bottom. I might even turn it just slightly. Just, just a little bit there to make that work. So that's good. I also want to try to um, just darken the top of the sky down. But before I do, I'd like to try to boost this sky a little bit, add a bit more clarity. So what we can do is create another mask. At this time, we're going to select the sky. And it's hopefully, there we go, it's going to select the, the sky there. It has a bit of a bleed over onto the building. But I don't think that matters too much because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to add some clarity. So clarity really makes the sky pop. You see, if I go all the way over there, massive amounts of clarity. Look, it really, really pops up there. I'm not going to go quite as much as that. I'm going to go about 50. Um, and I think that works well. And I'm also going to go up, add some contrast to that sky. So it just darkens it down. Um, and I think, should we bring down the highlights? Just trying to find a sort of balance point there. Probably around about there. And uh, I think I'm probably going to, live with that should we open the shadows just a little bit yeah so the sky's looking good a little bit a little bit bright over here on the top left corner so we're going to create another mask we're going to um, take a, a brush but this time with the brush I'm going to leave the feather at 100% and the feather is going to be at 50% but I'm going to tick the auto mask at this point and what that does is that when we take a brush you can see there's a positive in the center just going to zoom in slightly up there Let's go back to that area. So it will pick up whatever the center of the brush is is bright or the color. If I started over here, it would use that color. If I start here, it would use this color. So as I paint through here with the mask, what it's going to do is it's just going to pick up. Can you see? It's just picking up the areas that are the lighter areas, and it's just going to uh, leave some of the darker areas. It's going to do the same through there. So it's sort of picking out the areas that are a bit brighter. So I'm just going to come down through there. You can see you get quite a, a good effect in terms of picking up the light area. So I even might even pick these along here and just go across the top there just to darken those down. So now what we'll do is we'll reduce the exposure for that area. So you can see it's only affecting the bright area. You see, because that's what the auto mask does. So I'm just going to drop that down, not too far. I'm going to bring down the highlights for that area as well and uh, even bring down the shadow, no, maybe a little bit up on the shadows. This darkens that area down. I can also add another brush, but this time without the auto mask and a slightly bigger brush. So I can actually generally just do one pass over the whole area just to darken that all down a little bit on this side where the sun's coming through. It's a little bit bright down here as well. So we're just going to. Just paint that in over this side and just darken that down a little bit. Good stuff. Right, so let's zoom back. So, and I think this path area is also very bright here. So we can we can put the auto mask back on, take a smaller brush just to come in on this area, and then just literally just paint that area out there where it was quite bright. Just on the plant there as well. There we go. It's a little bit darker there. That's working well. So we're going to add some day to night effects on this. We're going to um, come out the mask just for a second. I think we should just darken the whole scene just a little bit more and add in just a little bit of contrast. That's good. Yeah, bring down the highs just slightly. And uh, now we can add the additional lighting that we see from these these lanterns. I will also add one or two of these windows as well as, as light coming through. But let's do the lanterns first. So I'm just going to zoom in on this lantern here. Oops, sorry. Just zoom in on this, this first lantern here. We're going to take a mask. We're going to create a new mask. We're going to go to radial gradient. And we're going to take a, a slightly bigger radial gradient than the lantern itself. To make sure the feathers at 100%, which it is, we're going to bring up the exposure so it's really bright, add in a little bit of color so we've got a bit of yellow there, and then what we're going to do is subtract a brush, but this time the brush is going to have zero feather and 100% flow. And what that means is it's going to remove, I'm going to turn off the auto mask, it's going to remove all 
of the radial gradient because it's a negative you see so I'm now going to click on the edge there one click hold down the shift key and click again just to get a nice straight edge along this lantern same here click shift click click shift click just to light round just going to freehand that bit underneath so now I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger and I'm just going to draw around there as such just make sure that there's no other part so if I hover over the the mask now you'll see a little bit there there is and there's a little bit there but if I hover over the mask you'll see that the only thing that is now masked out is the lantern itself so probably want to just put a little fine line down there and I'm just going to bring the feather up so I can just put a give the feather 100% just do a little tiny line down through there Sh click shift click and that that works quite well so that's the the lantern itself now what I really want to do is I want to brighten the lamp up so if I click on the actual radial gradient and right click and duplicate the mask not duplicate the radial gradient duplicate the mask is what I want to do so it keeps the previous mask so we now have got two on top of each other but if I take the top one and make it smaller okay just come out of mask so you can see you get the the lantern inside looking much brighter that works quite well now it's important we're going to come back to these shortly because we're going to put some more light on the wall here and uh, what we need to do is make sure that this isn't too bright so we're back into to mask I'm going to create a new mask a new radial gradient and I'm going to take quite a large radial gradient here and put it over the lantern itself so it's going to come down the wall a little bit that's probably a bit too wide we'll go there and we're just going to bring that down so now we're going to add exposure just to brighten that area up you can see it's brightening up on the wall there but you can see that's now blown out it's too bright so just need to add a bit of color into that main one there we go so to make this darker there are a number of ways you could subtract that part of the mask but what I prefer to do is go back to the the previous mask which was the, the lantern mask and then just drop down the brightness a little bit see how that works just drop the brightness down and we and it, it looks quite good here now to make this look authentic we need to have a bit of a shadow off the edge of this wall because that lantern is there but more importantly the light wouldn't go up because it's got a top to it so inside this big this big radial gradient we're going to subtract a brush we're going to run with quite a lot of feather probably around about 65 percent and uh, we're going to go with with quite with 100 percent flow i'm going to take the brush that's a little bit bigger and i'm just going to click here and then click up away so you get this sort of line coming away so i'm just going to draw through there and i'm going to do the same thing up through there i'm just going to come up and then just take the rest of that out so you get this sort of line of light so i'm just going to drop to 50 percent flow and just soften that edge a little bit more just for a couple of passes same here just going to soften that edge a little bit so you can see the light is lighting up on the wall we need to deal with this little shadow line down here so take the take a smaller brush here click at the top shift click and then shift click at the bottom and i'll go back up again because i'm at 50 percent just to create that uh just to create that sort of line there i think this is a bit bright so i'm just gonna make that brush a bit bigger and just sort of paint in there a little bit just to bring that down slightly there we go so that lantern's working quite well now i'm going to move it up just going to zoom out slightly come back to 100 so that that's the lantern on the wall that's looking okay but we do need to cast some light down the wall here now we can either take another brush from this one which will give us the right colors so i can go back into that mask as you can see there's a little bit at the top there i just need to just need to remove there we go but what we can do is we can add a brush so if we add a brush with 100 percent feather 50 percent flow it will add light based on the color settings that we've got so i can just paint in here a little bit of light coming down the wall and then um, we can probably put a little bit of light on top of these benches here up through there that just makes it work work well so just strike a little bit away over there too far just come back a little bit just going to reduce the flow there we go so we're just lighting up over there and down the wall so let's put some on top of this little plant here just so we're picking up some light there that looks good 
Now I also want to brighten up this area underneath this porch here. So what we're going to do is create another radial gradient here and I'm just going to pop a radial gradient over that light as you can see there cutting right down to the bottom and then I'm just going to brighten that up. So watch what happens here. We brighten that up and it brightens up the area inside. I don't need to add much more color to that because it's it's already working quite well but we would cast a shadow so this area up here needs to be removed um, and the area perhaps a little bit off the sides here so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract a brush the same as we always do we're going to zoom in on this this little area here I'm going to go with a no feather 100% removal and we're going to need to trace this line so this can be quite difficult so we want to remove this as you can see we want to remove this but it can be quite difficult to follow these edges so what I suggest you do is take a smaller brush you click to remove and then you hold down the shift key and now you just follow the edge by little little, little clicks just to just follow around and you, you can't draw a perfect curve but what you can do is you can follow quite a nice curvy line and, and the, the smaller the clicks that you make that the more smooth it will look and particularly here going past this light light fitting here just going up there and then we will just work our way around there with these small clicks. And this is how you do this is how you do quite intricate um, removals, particularly when you've got curved curve lines. Um, doing church um, sort of you know windows where you have stone stone windows. They're all different shapes, and this is a great way of of finding your way around the edge. Um, to get that that perfect removal so I'm just going to come around and freehand that last bit so you can see how bright it is over here we're going to make the brush bigger now bear in mind we're still on 100% feather so I'm just going to come in there and just follow that round now I can freehand it because I've got that that sort of working area now that we we put in so I'm just going to come round all the way over and remove that that radial gradient there we go just back over the top there I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, make the brush bigger still, and just make sure that we've got all of that over the top there. So let's just hover over the mask. You see there's a little bit up the top there. We'll just remove that as well. So we also want to take out the edges of the, the doors here. So I'm just going to come in here and click there and just shift click down the bottom. Uh, and that will just darken off here. So click and shift click down there. We'll take a slightly... Sorry about that. I'm just going to take a uh, slightly smaller brush. Just take a slightly smaller brush here. Take a slightly smaller brush and I'm just going to cut across here from here to here just to sort of take that line out. Now, that wasn't quite big enough, so I'm just going to um, take the brush, make it slightly bigger, there we go, and we're just going to cut across that line there, so we just take that out. So we've got a brighter area under here, we've got this brighter area in there, that works quite well, and uh, I might just darken down this this railing a little bit in the front here, just just to be sure, just take a small brush, roughly the same size as the, the, the bar there, and just click, shift, click, just to cross across there. And we'll take one slightly bigger there. Just run that down. So that's how you, you can take out the the objects that are in in the scene, if you like, already illuminated. So that's good. So let's move across to the other lantern over here. So we'll repeat, we'll repeat the whole process again on this one. We're going to uh, come in a little bit closer. There we go. We're going to take a create a new mask, new radial gradient. We're going to take that radial gradient slightly bigger than the lantern itself. There we go. We're going to take that up to a hundred percent exposure. Add that little bit of color just to give it the yellow. We're going to subtract a brush. And we're just going to come in there, click, shift, click, remember? Click, shift, click, 
shift click on the edge there, shift click, paint the bottom out, take a smaller one to just come down from above, click, shift click, and then we can take a bigger brush to just wash around the outside, get rid of the rest of that radial. Now if you do make a mistake and you accidentally cut over the edge like that, you just command or control Z to undo it and then re try again. This time, try not to uh, go inside the radial. There we go. And then we do what we did before. We click, right click, duplicate the mask to make the bright one. Bring that in the center there. And then you've got your lantern in the center of it. So I'm going to create another radial gradient. We're going to pull out a big radial gradient. Remember to change the angle so it matches the wall. So I'm just going to come up there, a bit, quite a big one there. Brighten that up. Add that bit of color in. That's nice. Just drop back to the previous mask so we can drop away the brightness. On the top mask, we're going to subtract a brush. That brush is going to have 100% feather and it's going to have probably around about sort of 50% flow, make it a little bit smaller here. And I just want to come in on this light here and click it up and away, shift click effectively, click, shift click. You can see that it's just working our way away from there. I'm going to make the brush bigger. And we're just going to paint the rest of that out above so we can see we've just got that sort of blended, that blended edge. Let's just have a look at the mask, a little bit in the middle there. That works quite well. A little bit of a shadow needed over here. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to click and shift click down here. Just to take that edge out. Make it a little bit darker there. That works very well. Now remember, we're going to add a brush to this, to this overall um, radial gradient. And then we can use that slightly bigger brush just to work some more light in below this lantern down here and down here light up those benches a little bit um, probably a little bit of light along along this edge of this door just to light that up let's get back in there so you can see that's working quite well but now we've got the path here we can actually see the path so what we can do is create a new radial gradient Pull it out along here where the path is. Just make it the same shape as the path. I'm going to put it down there underneath the lantern. I'm going to brighten that up. There we go. You can see that works quite well. Add in that little bit of color that we need. Now we don't want the front of the wall lit because that would effectively be in shadow. So we're going to subtract a brush. The brush is going to have next to no feather, 100% flow. And we're just going to take the brush up here click on the edge of that wall and then just shift click just work our way along there just to take that out and then you can see you've got a nice nice edge there so there's some spotlights up here we need to light the sign they would be lighting down so let's create a mask radial gradient and I'm going to pull out quite a large radial gradient and you'll see there's a spotlight there and there's a spotlight there so let's put the center of that spotlight here right I'm just going to alter the position because it's sort of lighting downwards so that means it's going backwards I'm just going to bring up the exposure there okay just make that a little bit bigger and effectively um, that's the light coming down so we need to take the bit away from above so what we're going to do is I'm going to put a second radial but this time I'm going to duplicate the radial right so we've got two radials coming in there put the other one on that one just the same, so the light's coming downwards. Now it doesn't look very realistic at the moment, I'll agree with you. Let's just put a little bit of color in there. So effectively, because it's a duplicated radio, whatever we do to one, it does to the other. So now we're gonna subtract a brush. We're gonna have quite high feather, 100% flow. I'm gonna make the brush smaller, because I need to get in behind these lights. And I need to sort of bleed the light upwards and away. So we're just gonna come off there, and we're just gonna come away from that so just make that a little bit bigger there and then we're just going to take that away so we don't want that above same on this one just going to come away gonna click shift click to get that nice straight line same there click shift click we'll just paint this out 
make the brush bigger and then we'll just wash away what was above but the lights are pointing downwards so we do need to have a nice edge on there so I'm just going to take a brush from here click there and then just cut downwards like that can you see so we get this downwards edge same here I'm just going to come in there cut downwards that was a bit tight that one just going to try that again come up there cut downwards over to here and you can see we've got the light coming down those literally are coming down now it would be a bit brighter right underneath so I'm just going to add a brush okay and I'm just going to take a very small brush here and just sort of pick up the light right right underneath it just 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 right underneath it there you can see and it's just gonna be a little bit brighter I'm gonna back the flow right down a little bit and just pick up the top there and I'm just gonna subtract the brush again just to take that edge away there there we go so that's lighting up the sign that looks quite good what I will do to these radials is I will add some clarity clarity always really really works quite well I'll just pop some clarity in there and I think I'll do the same with the um, with the mask on the ground. Add some clarity to that. We're also going to take the 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 lantern mask, add a little bit of clarity to that as well. And this one over here. So I'm just going to click on that one and add some clarity to that as well. Works very very well. So that's looking pretty good. Now what I will do is I'm going to move over and do these last couple of lanterns over here and this street light. Uh, I'm just going to speed up the video because you've seen me do two of them uh, and that way uh, the video won't be too long. Okay, that's pretty good. Happy with the, the lighting effects we've got there. Just want to light one or two of these windows. So I think what we'll do is we'll pick uh, a couple of these upper windows. To do that, we're going to create a radial gradient, as always. We're going to take a large radial gradient. Now, it's important that the center of the radial gradient has got to be where the light bulb might be in the room. So it's probably going to be over there somewhere in the room there. I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit so we can just see what we're doing. There we go. So we're going to bring the exposure up to 100%, make it really bright, add that little bit of colour in. I'm going to add a little bit, of, little bit of magenta this time. I'm going to subtract a brush, so we're going with low feather, high flow, so we can remove the, 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 the radial from around the windows. I'm just going to get a bit closer still, I think, to be honest. So we're going to come in here and we're going to click, shift, click in there. Actually, just going to come back out from that because that has the... Um, when I uh, subtract the brush make sure the auto mask is off so we're going to click shift click in there gonna come around that window click shift click same on this side click shift click I don't want to go too big on this side I just want to come down to that edge there So you notice you can do cone shapes as well, which is quite clever. You go from a large and then shift with a, a straight line. So I'm just going to come up through the center there. And then down here, we just need the edge of that window along there. Come up through here. There's a little bit of an opening there, as you can see. So I'm just going to come across there, leave that opening open. And I'm just clicking around, just going around the window. Same down through here take that out so all we're going to leave illuminated as part of the the window is is the glass area effectively the rest of it's going to be masked out so it's going to come down there the windowsill would be would be in shadow so I'm just going to take the windowsill out I'm going to come up the side here just make sure we've got all of that click shift click to get those straight lines so I think we've got the whole window there make my brush bigger so I can take out 
the remaining area there. Click shift click. There we go. So we're going to zoom out still further. Still got the large brush just to remove the rest of that that radial gradient that we're working on. There we go. Hover over the mask just to see just the window now. So we can actually add a little bit more orange to that shot. So it looks like there's a, a light going on there. Now we could make that just slightly darker, just bring back it off a little bit, like so. But where that, that is, we can click and right click and duplicate. And then what with the brighter one on the top, we can make it look like there is literally a light bulb inside the room. So it's just going to take a little, little light bulb. Let me just come out of the mask and you'll see what I mean. Now it's a bit too bright, a bit too round. So we're just going to go back to, to that one. Just going to bring that down a little bit. Just bring it down. There we go. So now you can see you've got this light bulb up there. It's probably still a little bit big. So let's just select it one more time, make it a little bit smaller. There we go, make that smaller. As well, just a little bit brighter. There we go. So it looks like there's a there's a light bulb in there. So just zoom back, come out, out of mask, we'll just zoom back. It just looks like it's a, a light bulb, still a little bit bright. Just back him off just a little bit more. There we go. So that looks quite good. Uh, maybe we'll take one of these other windows. Uh, this one may be down here. We'll do the same thing. So we're going to zoom in again. Just move that into the center. So we're going to create a radial gradient. Pop it over the window like we did up there. Put it so the, the light bulb is slightly up to that side there. Then we're going to brighten that up, bring it right the way up, add in that color that we want, just balance those colors there, a little bit magenta, just to balance it in a little bit. And then we're going to zoom in and we're going to subtract, we're going to subtract the uh, the brush again. So subtract brush, 100% flow, low feather. It's going to come in nice and tight with the, with the brush here. Click, shift, click, like we've been doing to go around the window. Click, shift, click. Yeah, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller to go along here. Click shift. Just undo that. Control Z. There we go. Just going to click there. Click there. It needs to just be a little bit higher so we don't get a white line there. Click there. Let's paint that window out. There we go. Along the bottom of the window. That's good. Come down the side of this frame. It's going to get in there and then we're going to come across on this lower frame. So we still leave that sort of cut there where the window is open. Around this window. Make the brush slightly smaller using the, uh, the square brackets just to the left of the return key. And I'm just going to use two, two smaller brushes there just to get the edges sorted. That's good. Um, and then we just need to make this a little bit bigger over here. And now we can start working our way around to paint the rest of it. Paint the rest of it out like we did previously. That's it. Bigger brush still. Click, shift, click. Click, shift, click. Perfect. Need that little one in the center there. See that frame there. So I'm just going to come in there got it so that's working well let's just zoom out slightly take a bigger brush just to take the rest of it away there we go up this side just hover over the mask see make sure we've got it all we do it's just the window like we did before so again it's a little bit too bright so we can just back that off slightly and then we can click right click duplicate mask and we can take a little tiny light bulb in the room, same as we did before, not too bright. Just come away from the, there we go, we've got light bulb in there. That's working very well indeed. So I'm just going to zoom back again. So I quite like that. I think we need to light this area up here just a little bit more. So uh, let's just come back in there. 
we're going to take another mask and create another radial gradient. We're just going to pop one over these benches around this area here that's sort of coming down from those lights. Let's actually make it quite a bit bigger there. Just brighten that up gently. Add a bit of contrast in there. Don't want to light up the front wall there, so subtract a brush and then just take that a little bit out along the edge, along the front edge. That's good. So we're looking pretty good. What we do need to do is we do need to add some reflections down here in the water from these lights. So to do that, we're going to create radial gradients. We're going to look to where that would fall and it would fall approximately down here. We're going to do a nice long long radial like so and uh, what we're going to do is just bring up the exposure just a little bit like that just put it make sure it's lined up properly i don't need to add any color into that that's working quite well um i'm going to not go quite so bright uh, but i am going to add in a second radial duplicate the mask this time this one's going to be smaller like such so if I if I go and have a look at that you get the the light in the water it's a bit bright so we'll go back into the mask go back to that last one and just drop that off slightly and that works really really well I've got to say so we'll do the same with the others so we're going to create another radial gradient to come in over here just pop that one right about there bring that up so we've got a little bit of brightness there it's down a little bit more there right click duplicate it make it smaller like we just did with the other one back off the exposure slightly and you've got a lovely reflection there in the water so um i think we're pretty well there on this one i probably just do some overall tweaks here I think I'm just going to uh, bring down the highlights a little bit more open up the shadows a little bit more for the, the overall shot there um, I'm going to back off the saturation just just a little bit about minus 20 but add in a little bit of vibrance uh, and the vibrance sort of makes it makes it pop I'm going to bring that down even further on the saturation probably minus 34 35 something like that um, bring that bring that vibrance up Yeah, that works really, really well. I think a little bit more brightness in the whole scene. Just going to check my whites. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and then just bring my whites up. You can see there that the light bulbs are, are white, which is fine. And then the blacks, just going to back the blacks down. So we've got a little bit of black coming in there. So we've got good contrast. I'm just going to make that a little bit brighter still. But what I want to try to do is just sort of bring these corners in. So I think a post crop vignette would be a good thing to do. I'm just going to go down to effects, bring in a post crop vignette, something like quite quite a harsh one about minus 30. But important, whenever you put do put um, a, a post crop vignette in, take the feather slider and bring it all the way up to the top. It just opens up those edges. I'm just going to back that off to about 25, minus 25. I think that works very, very well. So there we go. There's uh, another day tonight using Sky Replacement and some of the features in Photoshop for uh, removal. Try to keep this one a little bit simpler this time so that we're we're not doing such complex work. Um, if you enjoyed what what you saw this, what you saw, then please uh, click like. And uh, if you've got any comments, uh, questions, or even tips, I'd be more than happy to see them in the comments down below. Uh, that would be really really good. And if you haven't already subscribed, it would be wonderful for you to join my adventure here on YouTube. And um, I'm going to say this is done and bye-bye uh, for now.